Hello ladies and gents, welcome back to Hit Hitbox TV's Challenger Face-Off with yours truly Metis. Alongside me is Spunnington, we are live into the picks and bans for game number three. Now something we were discussing in the break there, Spunnington, was Dark Passage's mentality going into this game. They're going to probably be quite low on morale. I want to see if they're going to go for the rise again, because personally, I just don't feel it's worked for them. Yeah, every time they pick rise, gamers do have a plan to deal with it. They 2v1 it, they 3v1 dive it, or they 2v1 it and just 2v1 dive it. Both games, Fab Fabulous has been way, way behind the curve by the time he gets out of the laning phase. And even once he gets back up by farming like he did in the first game, JWoww with his Aurelia pick is very, very good at dealing with that. So I really don't want to see them pick it. If they, if they still insist on going for Rise here, they have to have some kind of plan. They need to like pick themselves the fastest two v one pushing team in the world. Like they need to pick themselves like a Jinx. And I'm trying to think because Leona is the one I would have picked, and it's already been stolen away. They need to pick themselves some kind of phenomenal pushing bot lane. If, as it looks like they might be going for, they're going for a more standard two v two lane. I think they need to stay away from Rise at least until they've seen most of the picks out of Gamers Two. Right, so a couple things to note here. One is that Lucian was picked away from Gamers 2, which has been their go-to AD carry. I like that idea. I hope they don't go for the Rise still. However, that is leaving Jinx open, and without Thresh available due to it being banned, Jinx is going to have a pretty good time at bot lane. This would suggest to me, Spud, they're probably going to go for a Morgana with the Lucian if Jinx is locked in. Yeah, that can work decently well. Uh, Jinx is obviously a very, very strong AD carry in the late game, but she's not going to have the same level of domination that Yuki's been showing on Lucian early on. She still has a ton of damage to contribute early on. She, the lack of mobility really, really hurts her. If they go for the Draven, however, which they have locked in even on my stream screen, which is just a teensy, teensy little bit behind because Hitbox is very, very quick, I've got to say, that's looking like they still want to dominate the lane. They certainly do, and that's also going to be a very strong 1v2 lane matchup if that's what they choose, because you're going to bully everyone away. Lulu is still available. I was going to say it would be a good support, however, I would expect to see it in mid here, Spuddington, because obviously recently that's all that's really been played, but also is an extremely strong mid-controlling kind of champion and does pretty well in 1v2s if they want to go for that 1v2 in mid. I think picking out Lulu here is very, very good for their, their combo. They've got uh, they've got Shivana, they've got Xin Zhao. Both of those characters are diving characters who are tanky by default because they get bonus resistances, which means they make better use of the bonus health out of Lulu. They synergize very well with her ultimate because of the knockup, because of the slow that it gives you. They're just all around very, very good. The only problem that I'm seeing for Dark Passage at the moment with their composition is maybe that they're going to be a little bit weak if it gets to a stage of the game where games 2 are snowballing ahead because their combos work best as combos. They may not have very good responses if gamers 2 do what they've done for the last two games and basically just split push them into picks and then pick them into objectives. It's been crushing them so far. Maybe they'll have a better time forcing actual team fights though, because they will at least have the mobility out of a Lulu. Yep, so last pick coming in here for Dark Passage. What is it going to be? It's going to be a Karma. They're very Ooh. quick on the gun there. So Karma Lucian does actually make a lot of sense. It's a strong lane. You've got a lot of mobility there. And also uh, lots of movement alongside the Shivana and also Zin. So this is a very different composition this time around from Dark Passage. And I've got to say, Spud, I'm so glad they've gone for this. They didn't go back to the Rise. It wasn't working. They realized it wasn't working. And they have definitely gone back to the drawing board. Yeah, I like this composition here. Uh, they've got a Shivana here with the top lane versus Jax. That's obviously not a great matchup, but it's one that Xin Zhao can gank into, gank into effectively early, potentially snowball that in their advantage. Otherwise, they've got very, very safe, very strong lanes, and they will transition very, very well into the mid game. It's looking very, very good for them on that front, but I've still got to agree with the poll that we put into the hitbox chat. 52.4% 
says Dark Passage will come. Actually, I don't agree with that. I misread that. <laughs> I don't agree with that. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's clearly a strong Turkish following here because, <laughs> yeah, I actually don't think Dark Passage will come back into this because it's a, just an unfortunate fact that they've been outplayed quite a lot throughout this series and their morale is probably still not great. You just did a fab fabulous this teleport. Halfway through the point, you're like, abort, oh, abort. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want any part of this. 52.4, that's interesting because they've got a mountain to climb. It's not unheard of, as we said before. We have seen comebacks winning three games consecutively, but my goodness, is it going to be difficult. That being said, though, Spud, we are in a delay. We're sticking down, and we are going to be live into that third game in about 2 minutes 20. So we're going to cut to a quick commercial break. While we do so, why not get yourself registered on Hitbox TV and also get following the stream? It takes 5 to 10 seconds. It's as simple as that, and it will not notify you every single time we go live lots more league of legends content coming up but for the next two minutes we're going to go to commercial break when you rejoin us we'll be live for game number three Till it's 
Hello, and what could be the final intro that we do for tonight's proceedings in this game between Gamers 2 and also Dark Passage. Currently resides at 2-0 in this best of five. We are live on the Rift. I think Spuddington is still loading in, so uh, give me a poke when you are ready to jump on I to the will. saddle there, Spud. But regardless, no early action is ensuing just yet. This trench warfare once again. Both teams just occupying their side of the jungle, trying to spot something out. Gamers 2, they could potentially be lining up for a late and Invade again. We've seen this do uh, a couple times previously, so it wouldn't be completely off the cards. Are you in, Spud? I am now in. Excellent. So, indeed, late invades are now very much the in thing. They are, in fact, Minions so in small. that most junglers hate them. But there is, a, there is somewhat of an aspect here where if Naru is there and they spot this out, Xin Zhao obviously can then steal the enemy buff. I'm a little bit curious, though, as to whether Nidalee would try and stop that, because with spears, you can always try and go for a steal if you know that a jungler is taking a given buff. But certainly, it does seem like this is going to get spotted out. Yep, carbon copy from the previous two games. Jaywell should be able to secure this one, just Shalana waiting in the wings. Morden will be taking it. There we go. And Jaywell is moving down here. So, yeah, it's going to be lane switch ups once again. Brave and Leona up against Shivana, and that will leave Jax in a 1v2 against Karma and Lucian. So, this has happened all three games so far, and it's always paid off for Gamers 2. Yeah, a little bit interesting though that Gamers 2 are the ones instigating this 2v1. They're obviously not confident in Draven, even though Yuki's been doing very, very well, and he's, he's done very, very well on Lucian. In, they're not confident in his ability to dominate a 2v2 lane, because the 1v1 matchup actually probably goes in their favor as well. So maybe they were just being too clever for themselves and predicting the Dark Passage would swap up and ended up getting caught out as a result of that. But clearly it's not what they were really... Uh, I, I don't think it's really what they wanted. Yep, certainly could be the case right now. So again, we're more than likely going to see Morden joining his two players at the top and trying to force down this tower as soon as possible. So fabulous in familiar territory. And he's going to hate every second of this because he's not been able to spread his wings and really do much in these games so far as Rise. Let's see if Shivana's any different. He is going to get caught out here. Burnout's been used, however, so he's going to be okay. But Morden again is going to join the ranks at top and they are putting heavy punishment on this tower. Crystal Meth in the mid lane. Here we go, Zin's going for that gank. This is the reason it was banned in the previous game. He's going to tower dive. They oh. don't get the glitter lamps from Noru, which was massive. Ocelot survives and also forces that flash from Crystal. Oh, flash but Naru. In from Naru. He is hungry for this kill and he's going to pick it up as well. So first blood going down from Dark Passage as the first tower goes down from the opposite side. Patchy and a bit of a screw up on both parts there, but the end result is what Dark Passage wanted from that. The question now, though, is whether that jungle commitment to helping the mid lane rather than helping either of the two versus one lanes, now will this cost? Yeah, now will this cost them another tower? Crystal Meth is level three. He's a big damage threat. I don't think that G2 can dive this. Oh, Crystal's so huge right now. Dude's taking a ton of damage. He's tanking up that tower. Crystal, however, is as well. He's going to fall to Lee Sin. Yuki doesn't die, so they're juggled all that damage from the tower. However, here comes Naru. Glitter Lance Ooh, doesn't land, him. even though Yuki actually did flash away, and he goes down there. So already you've got Naru with two kills for zero deaths. Yeah, indeed. So really good stuff there for Dark Passage. This is not even close to as bad as it went in the last couple of games. I would say Dark Passage kind of want to get a shift on in this bottom lane and they want to be able to take or at least put down some damage on that tower soon. But really, really good start because it means that Fab Fabulous gets off the ground. Naru is now looking very, very good and he's going to be able to roam very, very easily, post six especially. And that just means that Dark Passage have a footing. In the last couple of games, it felt like they never get got off the ground. Exactly. It was cruise control for games too. Triel has been caught out there from the Zenith Blade, but again, not too much follow-up damage uh, because Holy Phoenix and Triel have had a pretty much free farm, free experience as well at bot lanes. They do find themselves slightly ahead in that respect. However, yeah, as you say, cruise control for games too. This is the first time that they've been kind of haltered 
in this best of five. And this could be Dark Passage starting to dictate that pace. And that's what we said in game one. It was all gamers two dictating the pace. And I feel Dark Passage are definitely better when they're in a driver's seat. Yeah, they are. Morden also has been spotted out in this bottom lane. So we'll see if Dude is going to try and engage for his team. But I don't think they're going to get it simply because Dude used his flash in that dive in the top lane. Yeah. Which it didn't work out for them. So really still feeling the effects of that. It certainly is. And so will Ocelot, due to the fact that right now Nori is ahead on CS, ahead on kills. And he's going to be able to poke significantly. Holy Phoenix gets himself Zenith played. Shield of Daybreak as well lands on top of him. But there is the strength of Karma. Uh -huh. All of the turnaround right now. Here comes Crystal from the side. Saving Grace as he doesn't have his flash available. But it does not look good for Dude. He's going to try and come back with that Zenith Blade. But Holy Phoenix takes down the kill. And also, just to add salt to the wounds, Naru was coming down to bot lane. So whatever happened there, Dude was not escaping. Yeah, very, very nicely done. And D uh, Naru's ability to roam down there also meant that Lee Sin couldn't try and do anything about that. So, will Dark Passage be able to get the tower? It actually looks like Triel's been found. He has been. However, he's going to force back Morden with his focused resolve, which of course when it procs will be stunning. Here uh -oh. comes a nice stand aside though from y Yuki, but he doesn't have a lot of mana and not really the ability to close the gap. So he has to back away. Still three players for Dark Passage at bot lane. Yeah, it looks like they're not going to try and go for the actual push on this tower now. So really, really scary stuff right now. Papyrus in the top lane has also just hit six, same as Jack. So that's continuing as that top lane brawl. The thing Dark Passage are trying to do right now, though, is to recall their bot lane without opening themselves up to any objective steals. And more than just with that. Yep, he certainly did. Uh, Crystal has himself uh, a lease in there, He's just jumping on his own blue buff, but Naru and Crystal both coming round. However, this would be a 4 versus 2 situation, and Blue has already been picked up by Morden, so weren't able to give it across to Ocelot. However, they do steal it away all the same. Poll results coming in. You guys voted for MVP for Gamers 2. You thought Nidalee with 32.9%. And on the flip side, 55.6% of you thought that Naru would be MVP for Dark Passage. And so far, he is delivering on that one. Really, really good showing out of Naru. And it's going to be up to Ocelot now to pull this back a lot for his team. Because this is the first time Gamers 2 have found themselves behind after that early game. Nidalee is just starting to hit Power Spike. She's got her blue buff. She's got her level 6. She's a lot more capable of roaming. But she's still not going to be able to straight out fight Naru. And... That bottom lane is not looking brilliant either for Gamers 2. It's certainly not, and that has been their, their strong suit as well these previous two games, and indeed the majority of the time that we watch Gamers 2, their bot lane crushes. This time, definitely not the same, and that is going to kind of put more pressure as well, it has to be said on Morden, who normally doesn't have to bother with his bot lane spud. Suddenly he's like, oh god, I have to be in all three lanes, otherwise they could potentially lose. The worst situation to be in as a jungler is where there's no pressure anywhere on the board for your team, where none of your lanes are doing well. Morden isn't going to have to face that, at least at the moment JWoww is starting to get the edge, starting to get that little bit of an advantage over Fab Fabulous, and that means there is going to be map pressure up there. But he's still got to do something about that bottom lane right now. He's found Crystal Meth though! He has run himself around the dragon area. Dragon's rage Even back the towards Ocelot. There is the wild growth, however. Morden goes back, and he does have Ignite ticking down on him as well. But regardless, lots of ultimates. Someone is being burnt in the process. Nobody falls. Yeah, now game is two in the bottom lane. We're about to see if they still feel confident enough to fight. It's going to be level six for both of them very, very soon. There's a big minion wave right now, and I think Crystal Meth is actually predicting that there will be this big fight soon, because... We do actually, I think, know about that ward, so we we'll may be expecting it from Morden instead. But there's certainly likely to be a lot of fights down here very soon because there's so much burst from Gamers 2's lineup. But the problem for them is that they're falling behind and they're getting poked. Mm, yeah, exactly. And this also goes on to a question that you posed in uh, the break about Draven's mid game and how it's going to pay off. And all that thought because a tower dive coming in, Solar Flare does land, culling from the side, 1 for 1 trade. Holy Phoenix can't go too deep here. Tower's still healthy enough to stand quite a bit of damage. Ocelot from the side, however. Focus resolved on him from Triel. Is going to be stunning him for a split second. That's 
Walling Death not actually living up to its name this time around, doesn't secure anything. And that just goes to show how strong Dark Passage's bot lane is. They managed to stand tall and actually stay in lane to farm. And there's a funny little thing there. Both of those uh, engages there, neither side was quite as willing to dive as they would have been in the previous patch because both of them were aware of the fact their opponents had summon a heal available, which meant that it's hard, it means that it's harder to focus out any individual. You can't burst someone down with ignite and make sure that they stay down because they can cleanse away the ignite effect or not the actual damage but the grievous wounds effect and then they can heal up with their own abilities as well so it just makes it a little bit more likely that an engage will end without a kill yeah yuki he's not having the easiest of games this time around and again this goes on to draven he's he's typically an ad that's very bully centric in the early stages but if he doesn't have a great laning phase it's kind of weak in mid he picks it back up late game though once he has likes of infinity edge bloodthirster and the like so he is still going to be a threat going forward in this game but with that lane switch up not really paying off for them as much as they'd want it's quite scary bot lane actually there's going to be an engage because crystal is down here once again flash away from yuki and that's going to be holy phoenix surviving as well so dude again is going to be the sacrifice Lamb for his AD carry. He falls down. Oh! Question: Who's going to pick it up? He very nearly <laughs> though takes Holy Phoenix down with him. But like, do you get that kill all the same? Yeah, unfortunately, Zenith Blade is not a stun. It's only a root. Uh, so Holy Phoenix could still auto attack while he was being pulled in towards it. So good little bit of gold there going to Lucian and Draven. Like you said, very dependent on his laning phase doing well, is not doing well in the laning phase. Oh, one and two and down. 30 almost yes oh, oh the he was oh, doing the badly snipes. the snipes oh. though wow. from that whirling death that was pretty much perfect that pixel perfect from draven morden's chasing after crystal this is something we've seen a great deal of these junglers have been so oh, involved in this game um, however Naru did come across so he's gonna be all right but still that whirling death really did just i wouldn't say even up the odds but it got yuki back in contention yeah very very good snipe there and Taking advantage of the fact that someone was staying in, perhaps when they ought not to have been. And now a quick rotation to the dragon. Very, very smart indeed. They know Crystal Meth got poked down around mid lane. They know he's been forced out. Very, very simple. Trivial even to take away the dragon. So to get that, Gamers 2 are pulling themselves back to a very even looking ground where that early game was honestly botched by comparison with their previous ones. Yeah, but this is the experience, this is the individual talent and the team synergy shining through from Gamers 2, that even when they are behind, they still pick up those all-important objectives and make it work for them. Actually, 2-0 on objectives right now, because they've got a tower on that previous dragon, so the 3-6 score line pretty much mitigated, honestly, from those objectives. Yeah, it's that, it's that, like, that understanding. I want to call it like a holistic understanding of what's going on across the battlefield. You, un If you understand where everyone is at any given time and you make smart calls based on that, because if you pause a game at any time and you have complete map vision, even if you don't have complete map vision, it's very easy to call exactly what is the best play at a given time in League of Legends. But it's not so easy to do that in an active process where everyone's feeding in information to the shot caller and then you have to make the right call from that. It's very easy to let something slip by, which is unfortunately what Dark Passage have had happen to them now a couple of times. But we'll see if they can still exert this still ahead, if they can still exert that pressure. Yep, Holy Phoenix is still out trading Draven. Uh, Holy Phoenix has the Bloodthirst up and 900 gold, whereas Draven does have the advantage in terms of raw damage output, but that's not taking into account the shields that Triel can fire on down. So it's going to be uh, Lucian coming out on top most of the time here, and Dude has been eerily quiet in this game. He can't afford to engage as much, but they have picked a good time here as Holy Phoenix is going back. However, here comes a re-engage from Crystal. Beautiful solo flare, however, from Dude as well. It's going to keep them in close proximity. Teleport from JWoww, culling on Ocelot, who's completely out of position. He's going to fall down here, needlessly, I have to say, as well. But they do get the return kill, courtesy of Lucian onto, uh, sorry, 
Jax onto Xin Zhao. Lucian picked up the kill previously on Ocelot. One for one overall though, and that used teleport from JWoww to get him into the fight in the first place. So Dark Passage now able to push down this mid tower. This is going to give them an objective advantage. Shivana still applying pressure in the top lane. They should be able to save their bot tower as well as long as they rush down there now. But it actually looks like they may go for kills instead. And looking for this one, here comes the speed up from Triel Dragon's Rage. To use just to push him back, flashes well from Morden, getting himself out of uh, harm's way. Holy That's Phoenix and Noro have, I'm going to take the red buff instead, so they are going to get something small out of this. So that flash from Morden there actually looked a lot less impressive than it was, because he read the animation from Lulu, because there is a tiny little animation, casting animation on Glitterlance, and dodged the shot coming out from the picks, which was attached to him as a result. Yeah, very good play. Dude's been stunned. He's taking a lot of damage. There's the auto attacks as well. And the ignite ticking down. Is it going to be Boom. enough? The blade and the iron blaze, I should say, comes through and does clean that kill up for Holy Phoenix with those double buffs. He is looking very, very scary. The blade and R's. Yeah, blade and R's. As I, we should copyright that one. Ocelot goes down the mid again. Hmm. He's he's been caught a few too many times this game. I've got to say. Yeah, it's really not going well for him. Naru has been able to bully him out. It's an advantage matchup, no denying it, but they've been getting a lot of ground as a result of that. And now there's not even that split push pressure from Jax because Fab Fabulous is the one dictating the pace in the top lane. That teleport gank has set JWoww behind and set the whole map going Dark Passage's way because even though it was a, an even trade, it was an overcommitment to get an even trade. It seems like that 52 odd percent of the audience there voting for Dark Passage to bring their way back into this game could yet be proven correct because so far it's looking good for their team. However, it's still pretty close. There's a lot of scaling champions on the side of gamers who are only going to get stronger. I'm talking about the likes of Draven, Nidalee and Jax. So all things considered, they still can make this happen pulling through a mid lane. Not quite as impressive as some of Yuki's colleagues in the past, and Holy Phoenix will not be picking anything up after that one. No, Yuki was forced to go a bit, you know, a bit far back there, but there was a Leona there to tank it. With the shield, she just takes no damage from anything, and that's kind of what happened there. But now, I'm actually curious to watch this next little exchange in top lane. Because <clears throat> I'm kind of curious who's stronger, but they're not going to fight, so I'm not going to get to see it. That's, that's pretty much what, how it's been the entirety of these games, almost like a ceasefire called up there. And they uh, would prefer to farm than do anything else. So top lane definitely living up to its... Uh, a lot of people consider it a, kind of an island all by itself, and that's the way it's been going so far. Javelin hitting Naru, but not really chunking him as much as I'm sure Ocelot was hoping for. Yeah, I think, I, you know, for me, I, I kind of like top lane when I'm doing it in solo queue, because my mechanics are terrible. But it does mean if I do get an advantage, I don't have to team fight. I can just apply map pressure because I understand the game, but I'm terrible at it. <laughs> uh, so, you know, that way I can be useful without having to do anything. At least you're modest enough to admit that. A lot of play if you judge the LoL community, everyone's the best player oh in the world. Lord. Ocelot's taking a lot of damage, though, from Holy Phoenix, and he will be uh, popping through his, uh, his heel. Not his summoner, but his actual heal that he's given. And there is the Q landing from Ooh. Morden, also the Javelin, but again, Triel popping up at the uh -oh. right place at the right time. Another Q has landed, though. Relentless Pursuit oh. used to get oh. away, and he does manage to get away quick enough not to be punished. Triel on the re-engage, Morden Dragon's raging backwards, but Lucian picks up his fifth kill of the game. That was actually some slightly dodgy mechanics from Holy Phoenix there, but... Morden jumping in with his W to try and get in range to follow up with the Q kick actually meant that he'd overcommitted. He got trapped down there and bursted. And that means Dragon comes up. Dragon, very, very easy to take at this stage of the game now. As long as no spears get it. And now Dark Passage once again have the advantage and it's up to 5k. Yep, it is definitely looking good for them in the early stages of this game. Definitely the strongest showing we've seen from them so far in this best of five. But it's going to have to go a whole lot better going forward. Because as I say, scaling on the side of Gamers 2 going forward. Ocelot is being harassed from Naru in the mid. Doesn't land j -Well from the backside though. Suddenly a 3-4. Make that a 4v1. Make that a 5v1 if Dude had managed to get into 
close proximity. And I gotta say, with that pickup, they can now look to force down objectives. This mid tower is very healthy though, so it's gonna take a little while for them to chunk this one down. And in doing so, they could fall prey to this engage. Aww. Fabulous goes in, but he's gonna get decimated. I, I don't really understand that engage at all. It's a five versus four, and Shivana was far from full hit points. Yeah, it could have made sense if Shivana was on full health, because they would have had to retreat a couple of steps, take quite a lot of damage on that retreat, and maybe the chase would have been good enough since Dark Passage was ahead, but yeah, Fab Fabulous was on like, what, 40% health? He just got yeah. gibbed. Oh, Triel could be following suit as well. Does get up from the Javelin. Blue buff picked up on Ocelot. Here comes another Javelin, very nearly landing. And JWoww is starting to get to that scary Jack spirit of the oh, game. No. He's picked up one. Crystal has to back away. Triel's also running away. That Javelin again nearly hitting. But this is what I was talking about. If you give Jax, Nidalee, and also Draven enough time, they will start to bite. Yeah, they've got... So the weird thing about Draven is just that no matter what stage of the game, he's got tremendous amounts of damage. Spinning axes and blood rush, which you can have up permanently effectively, give you phenomenal damage. It's just being in position to put that damage down. But when you're on the chase, it's very, very easy to just keep putting down all those damage, catching all your axes as you run along. And that means Draven is just so scary in that situation, even if he is a little bit behind. Jax, very much the same. If he gets kited, he's going to have some problems. He's difficult to kite, though. And when he's on the chase and the enemy doesn't dare try and turn around to focus him down, and he's free to put down as much damage as possible, he's very, very scary. Yeah, definitely the case. And, you know, the thing about Draven is the way that his mechanics work, as you are mentioning before, you can pretty much have Blood Rush up consistently if you catch a Spinning Axe because it will refresh the cooldown. Draven is always stronger while chasing rather than being chased, whereas some AD carries like Caitlyn is actually the other way around. So as Draven, you always want your team to be aggressing and for the opposite team to be on the back foot. So far in this game, that's only happened once, and that was in the previous fight, and hey, they came out well ahead. So again, alarm bells will be beginning to ring for Dark Passage. If they don't plug some of these holes, they could end up throwing the game. Yeah, it was a messy fight, that last one. There were people in the wrong place at the wrong time, and Nari may be about to reimagine re that. Yeah, he... Uh... He is probably going to go down from Jax. In fact, no, while Growth will keep him alive just for now, and Good Jax is going to be chasing. Yeah, quite quite ballsy play there, I've got to say. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised JY didn't chase. There was understandable reason not to chase, given the fact that it would have been quite a heavy commitment. And oh well, recalling there is certainly going to say Warren. Oh, he's holy playing face. the long game. Eats the the javelin and gets crunched down to about half of his HP. And with the death on Lulu, that is going to pretty much signify the end of this mid tower, I've got to say. They're going to put down significant damage onto it regardless. Okay, they have been forced back for now. Here comes Crystal from the side. Jax is at top plate. This is effectively a four versus four. Fabulous going in. We'll get Dragon's Rage instantly backwards. That was yeah. awesome. And Warden goes in as well. Solar Flare comes down. Crystal Meth in the front lines will be going down. This is now when Draven starts to get into his element. But the enemy team is going to go ahead and back away. This mid tower is again going to be very vulnerable. Didn't take account of the fact that there was a teleport available on Jax. If they had kept the timer on that, they wouldn't have gone for that engage because they would have known he could just teleport straight in there. So, gamers two taking another little advantage, taking the kill, taking the tower, taking the map presence. You can see their warding control around the mid lane has dramatically improved from the way it was before which means that Nidalee becomes infinitely more effective. And Dark Passage cannot afford to get pushed back onto their towers, suffering from the split push from Jax, keeping Fab Fabulous in place, and the siege from the Nidalee, where if they've got no minions because they're being pushed back, they've got no defense against spears. That would equate essentially to Dark Passage falling in a very similar manner to the way they did in the first game. What was it again, the uh, the vote? I think 55.6% said Nara would be MVP for, for Dark Passage, but he started very well, but he's been kind of falling off the rails a tiny bit in these previous engagements. And his death, actually, was completely needless, I've got to say, in the tri-bush. Just recalling there is so dangerous, it's so ballsy, and it completely backfired. It got, yeah, and in the first place, why was he getting caught by Jax, like going further yeah. back near that tribrush near Baron? It was a bizarre place to be because there was obviously Jax could have been there. They didn't have vision of that area. It wasn't very safe. Maybe he felt he could escape no matter what went wrong. And 
he may have been right about that, but you still don't want to lose all your health and be forced to back. That creates a map pressure hole on your team. Yep, certainly does. And if Naru keeps getting caught like this, it's only going to be that bad times for his team. That is going to be Crystal Nath just uh, slowly walking in, gets the blue buff. They get the kill more than as well, who went hyper aggressive. So this really is the League of Thrones right now. Yuki's being chased. He is going to get culling in the backside as well from Holy Phoenix flashing in. Meanwhile, and there's going to be Solar Flare landing. Double kill going in for Crystal. Yuki's being completely decimated alongside Ocelon and constant speed up. Naru eats a javelin, which very nearly cancels his life. But he will be able to survive long enough to uh, help with this dragon. And dragon should be going down as well. So for all of the problems we were talking about before, Spud, this time around it was Gamers 2 getting caught needlessly. Yeah, it's a, it's a very common problem in players of League of Legends is getting caught needlessly. Um, but very, very nicely done. And we're starting to see both of these teams work really, really well when they're chasing and are awful when they're trying to kite out their opponents, it seems. Nehru, though, will give the edge to Dark Passage if they are on the retreat in the future, but he has to be there at the right time. On the other hand, though, if, like last time, Basically, the chase is coming in from Holy Phoenix with Red Buff, who is very, very fed, and Naru speeding him up hugely. That's a really, really scary proposition. I'm just kind of surprised that Morden, who is, is normally a really solid player with his decision-making, would jump on top of uh, Crystal without any ward coverage there. Because he effectively ju jumped in blind, not realizing that anyone else was stood in close proximity, and that effectively lost them a dragon. I mean, that decision pretty much was the, the catalyst of that domino effect that ended up in a free objective for DP. Yeah, that's what we know in the business as a brain fart. Now, yes. it seemed like... Uh, well, maybe it wasn't, though. I don't know. Maybe he thought something else was going on. But that's certainly the way I would interpret it. Everyone does fail occasionally. It's, it's uh, We're unfortunately human. We do have lapses. But... If he makes it again, he may start to seriously regret it. That Fabulous may regret this decision, but he's so tanky, he knows they can't reasonably engage on him. So even though he may get outnumbered, unless he gets seriously outnumbered, he's fine. Yeah, especially when his Flash and Dragon's Descent are available. He is way too tanky to burst down instantly. Randoon Zone and Sunfire Cape, and also a Spectre's Cowl, which is uh, probably going to go in Spirit Fissage, not entirely sure, only time will tell. But he's re-engaging on this one. Burnout onto Morden, who is nowhere near as tanky as him. Oslo's taking a lot of damage. There's the culling alongside Solo oh, Fled. They're coming from the side, and this is going to be Jay Wow doing what he does best, and that's killing carries. He's picked up the first on Lucian. However, he is now going to be the focal point of all of the damage from Dark Passage. Shut down from Crystal is going to be raining in as well. And Fabulous did not fall. He is so tanky that he basically pushed everybody back by himself, and that's going to be a three-for-one trade. Heroes of the fight there were Fab Fabulous and Crystal. They did so much damage throughout the fight that even though the AD carry of Holy Phoenix got bursted down almost immediately, Yuki had to run away. He was on the retreat, he couldn't catch his spinning axes effectively, his damage was lower than Lucian's would have been anyway, and as a result, Gamers 2 committed so hard but actually ended up losing the majority of their front line because there was an advantage already for Dark Passage. Yep, and this is the first time that we've really seen Gamers 2 under the cosh and in a really precarious position. Yes, it's about 7k, which isn't game-breaking, but the first two games went completely their way. They made a couple of errors, which they weren't doing in the first games as well. So, this is really when you get to see how a team responds, and they definitely have the potential possibility to bring it back as I'm talking. Holy Phoenix eats another Javelin, that's crunching him down for half of his health. He does fortunately have a Bloodthirster. Uh, there is an argument to be made sometimes when you're against an Italy to go like double blood, uh, double Bloodthirster item, to go double Lifesteal item, to go like Blade of the Rune King and a Bloodthirster, uh, simply because it lets you sustain, if you do get hit by a spear, that much quicker. And it's especially useful on Lucian since he has with the double shot to apply Blade of the Rune King twice and he gets the attack speed on his culling, so... You know, there is an argument to be made for that, but he's opting for a more conventional approach, going, it seems, for the max damage approach of Bloodthirster, Static, Shiv, Last Whisper, into an Infinity Edge, so he's planning on chunking through JWoww, certainly. 
And speaking of brain farts, it happens to us as well often, because I was like, hmm, is that Spectrus Cal going to go into a spirit visage? Of course it's going to be a Banshee's Veil. They're against a Nidalee. For some reason, I'm still stuck in Season 3, where Banshee's Veil would give you mana as well. I believe it built out of Catalyst of the Protector. Mm. That's not the case anymore. So, uh, that Banshee's Veil is going to be super, super useful against Nidalee. I wouldn't be too surprised if Lucian goes for that for his defensive item as well, because he's been eating quite a few javelins, and that completely negates any issue from, uh, the Nidalee. However, that's not going to stop him getting chased down by Jax. He does manage to maneuver himself away. Cullen comes in as well. He could turn this one back around. There is the Blade of the Rune King. However, look at j -Well's damage. It is huge Holy right now. He takes down the kill. And this is going to give him free range to push this bot lane. So now, whereas before Dark Passage were thinking about maybe even trying Baron, they can't afford to do that anymore. A mechanical misplay again there by Holy Phoenix. Just didn't judge Jax correctly. And now, Gamers 2 are starting this Baron. And they're doing that because they know Naru isn't there. And they know that they can defend it very effectively with their spears. However, if they can get the engage, Dark Passage could win this. Here comes Inner Flame and Crystal Mad and Fabulous all jumping on top of the AD carry. This is where Draven is going to shine now, however, because they're turning this one back around. This is perfect from Gamers 2. Shut down from Ocelot. This is really important for Nidalee to take that one down. Fabulous is super tanky, but he's got three hungry, angry players chasing after him. Now they're going to return this one back on towards Diu, who will probably be falling from that Ignite. Indeed, he will, courtesy of Karma. Now it's going to all be about how does Yuki fend off this Naru onslaught? Well, the question is, actually, will Tree I'll survive because Ocelot's chasing him down. No, he will not. And now, dude, is going to try and collapse on. Well, it's not going to happen just yet. And it wasn't dude I was talking about. Actually, it was Yuki. Dude is dead. Again, though, they've chased for so long that Yuki is going to probably not going to be as useful as Holy Phoenix because he's respawned. He's came back. And I, I got a question, Spud. Why would you keep chasing when you know the Lucians are alive? I guess they just didn't realize it. It was an incredibly long fight and it's very easy to tunnel vision on what you're doing, but that is one of the things that separates the good players from the great, is noticing stuff. Now it actually looks like Dark Passage are the ones going for the Baron. They will have Crystal back in and Fab Fabulous quite a short amount of time after, but with the Teleport Force, that's probably worth it. And JWoww is in a horrible position. He is caught between a rock and a very hard place right now. Uh, we saw him 1v1 Holy Phoenix before. Can he go one better and go in a 1 versus 4 situation? Now the Calvary has arrived. He will be falling. Has the damage been done though? Crystal eats a javelin. That's going to force him away. Yuki's trying his best right now, but he's been chased down by Fabulous, chased down by Holy Phoenix, and just ate a javelin in the backside. He's now going to try and turn this one on towards Holy Phoenix and takes down the kill. That's pretty much best case scenario. He knew he was dead anyway. Now the question is can Ocelot survive this one? Very likely. He's playing Nidalee after all. He will survive. Five, two for two trade and it's looking pretty even they go back in again though Fab fabulous will be sped up by calm this is why this uh, composition works so damn well because fabulous is huge and he's constantly breathing down the neck but there's a javelin landing on karma so this could buy up enough time for gamers 2 to survive oh. nice heal coming in there from ocelot keeps dude alive Fab Fabulous is a monster right now and he's getting kited really really hard but like you said because he's getting sped up by both Karma and Lulu, and because he's getting shielded by both of those two, he's basically an unkillable 700 movement speed, AoE damage spewing death machine. And it's causing huge problems in the fights, because even when Holy Phoenix dies in an arguably silly way to JWoww, it doesn't matter, because Shivana does enough damage for both of them, and Crystal Meth is enough of a threat that you can't ignore him either. And this is why Fabulous is such a good uh, pick on the Shivana against Draven. Because I mentioned this before, Draven wants to chase players down. He wants to be at the back lines and untouched. Fabulous doesn't give a damn. He is going to run right through the front line and he is going to get onto Draven whatever happens. And that basically takes down some of the damage that Yuki can put out in those fights. DP is starting the Dragon right now. But this is quite dangerous because JWoww's coming around from one side, the Ute's on the other, Crystal's been caught out of position here, and he's taking so much damage just from JWoww. Now here comes Draven from the side, Solar Flare I believe was used there in the process, indeed it was, and they do get that first kill. Oh. Fabulous is huge, but he's going to have to back away more than secures a kill on Holy Phoenix as well. And suddenly with two players dead in a death chamber for 50 seconds, this is Gamer 2's moment to strike. Javelin's landed on Triel, will be finished off there oh. from Morden, and Dude is going deep underneath the tower. 
power. Fabulous is massive, though, as we spoke before. He's a behemoth. He is completely huge. And he's re-engaging on top of this one. But now you start to see that Yuki has got to that stage where he can start to put dents in Fabulous's armor. Yeah, indeed. But still, that was a very, very messy place for Dark Passage to fight. And a very, very messy fight from them as well. They weren't sure whether to engage or wait for Fab Fabulous or disengage. And they got pincered as well. But now, will this Baron work against them? I don't think so. Fab Fabulous can't stop the more than take, even if he kills him. Yep, now it's going to be Baron Wow. Also, ward jumping there. Just to make sure they didn't try anything. <laughs> She's having a laugh off. <laughs> and Scumbag Naru will actually attack him. So uh, it's not its not all laughing games between these two teams, but game is two. They've looked well and truly behind the majority of this game. With that Baron, with the fact that they're scaling ahead and a lot of gold is well to be spent. Look at that gold tally. Four players over 1,000, three of which are nearly 2,000. Naru's found JWoww again. Don't think they want to engage this one, though. No, it doesn't look likely. They will back off regroup. We've got Thorn Mail now on Shivana, who is a terrifying like, must be up to 300? 367 armor monster right now. Uh, Crystal Mech gets tagged. I don't think you want to stay there and recall, but Dragon, you can't contest that! No, you definitely can't. They've got the Baron buff. They are getting big. One's taking a chunk of damage, though. Fabulous is in the front line. He's got four players hitting on top of him, and he's not going down without a fight. And actually, they managed to repel this one, all because Draven was at top plane. They don't have the AD carry. They don't have that sustained damage output they'd like. Holy Phoenix, though. So nearly dropping. <laughs> what is going on in this game? It's just so damn messy. The, the teams are just, like, they're changing their minds continually. Holy Phoenix! He's been taken down again, and there was no need for him to die. Just back away with the rest of your team. You've now left them a player short for 50 seconds. Draven's took the top tower as well, so that inhibitor is now very vulnerable. Dark Passage, you're breaking my heart. Why are you doing this to me? It does seem like... That has swung the game very much in Gamers 2's favour because where the momentum was going their way before Dark Passage now, they're playing the defensive game. Fab Fabulous running into four of them. <laughs> and he ults back underneath the tower. He is so incredibly tanky. JWoww is taking quite a bit. Now he's going to pop the ultimate on himself. And now JWoww turns it back around again. Here comes Crystal though. Ocelot's in the front line. This is definitely not where he wants to be. Randuin's Omen was popped in the process. And they back away again. Oh my goodness, with that Void Staff, his Javelin's doing so much damage. But they're doing everything right now, Gamers 2. They've picked up towers, they've took down the, the top tower as well, and they've not died. Yeah, they've still got a decent amount of time on the Baron buff. Naru's in a terrible place to be, the Death Chamber. What the... I, I just don't know. Um, so, our, our Dark Passage now... They must have felt relieved when they got through the early game and came out with a pretty significant advantage, but are they now feeling the comeback from Game of 2 and starting to tilt again? They, they need to just kind of sit back, regroup, catch people out again. I just, I don't understand some of the decisions. I mean, there's brain farting and then there's just like having an aneurysm. And I... I don't even know what to say anymore. They've made so many mistakes in close, you know, <laughs> consecutively. I'm even lost for words. They were so far ahead, and now they're getting decimated. And it's just because of players being caught out of position needlessly. JWoww is going to take the point here, take down that tower as well. And now the inhibitor is vulnerable. That makes two of them uh, vulnerable. They're taking down the first one and maybe moving on to the second. And what do you do now? If you engage, most likely you're going to come out behind. Make him take advantage of Fab Fabulous' strength while you still can, though. Jay Wow is just so beefy. That's Crystal jumping in, and he's going to go down first with the wild growth on top of him. There's Jay Wow picking up the pieces, and whereas Fab Fabulous before was pretty much immortal, he is anything but right now. Warden jumping back, and somehow they're turning this one back around. There's the Dragon's Rage, though, right in the face of Naru. Culling coming out, pretty much all landing on top of Ocelot. He could be falling. Glitter Lance is going to land. Fabulous on the back side. Is he going to get the kill? Yes, he is. Goes onto Rampage. Now JWoww will be falling down. Shut down Hogger from Lucian. And they turn it back around. So three players now for Gamers 2 are dead for 50 seconds. Our Dark Pass is going to try and push through mid because JWoww should be falling as well. Indeed he does. The inhib is exposed. They can rush that down. They don't, however, have the health to act 
actually tank through for a victory, and Morden is surely going to drop. That's all five players are going to be down if Morden does finally go down. There we go. Trio! A trio. Oh, he's he alive! Oh, God, that was close. Seven but health. Still, 20 seconds on DU, 25 trio! on Yuki. <laughs> he's really playing with his life. Oh, seriously, my heart, I don't know what to do. He just sat there under the tower. I I mean, I know, I know he knew he could tank one shot with a shield, but. They've been slow to take advantage of the fact that they could take oh, wait that a in minute. Here. Wait a minute, they're going for the finish here, Spud. Dude's here, Yuki's up in three. Out. Dude tried to actually finish off. Trio too tanky! The flare. They're too tanky and they're going to finish the game to make it 2-1 now. What a climax. What? I'm really confused. This game was so bizarre in the way both teams like okay that no game is two played it very logically they play like a normal team they they were grouping up they were taking the in here